Hey everyone, it's Heather with Heather the Painter here. I've had a lot of questions come in asking if Painter X3, the new release from Corel, has been worth the upgrade. And instead of writing a ton of emails, I thought I'd just show you some of the really cool features that I don't think people understand are there for Corel Painter X3. So we will dive in. You'll see my layout's a little bit different because I've customized it, but there are a couple new features that I think are absolutely worth that upgrade price. And for the very first one, um, if you're jumping from older versions such as Painter 11, you'll notice that in our brushes palette, let me clear this off, there we go, we now have the capability of importing and exporting not only single brushes, but also categories, which are all of the little icons on the left pane. Each of these are categories which house their respective brushes. So we not only have the ability to import and export individual brushes, entire categories, or your entire brush library, which are all of the categories within that workspace, we can export them into single, uh, single files, which I'll show you here how cool it is. Say we're gonna import, I'll pick a custom brush category that I've made. Um, say, let's do faux watercolors 2010, which are some brushes I was playing with. I'm going to export these as a category, which means it's going to collectively gather all of the brushes in the single category into one file. So if I click on export category, it'll ask me which category. I say, yep, faux watercolors. Okay. And then it'll ask me, where would you like to put it? So I'm going to put this faux watercolors 2010.brush category file, say on my desktop. If we hide painter, we'll now see that, that all of the brushes in that one category, I think there were five brushes in there, is now in one single file. So if you have used painter in the past, you know it was a royal pain in the butt. Being able to move old brushes around and share brushes between your computers or with other users and you had to have that nib, STK, JPEG, and I know I'm forgetting one of the files, but it was quite a mess to move them around. So now say I wanna move this to my other computer, all I would have to do is either put this on a USB stick, put it on my network, email it to myself, I could email it to a friend, and you can, I believe on Macs, you can double click this and it will self install into Painter. Or you can simply go into Painter X3, and this does apply for 12 as well. We would pull up the brushes palette, brushes palette, if not, you go to window, brush selector, little icon, little icon, <clears throat> import category, find that category, which I have here on the desktop, and it will automatically install it for you. You can see at the bottom here, it has loaded all of those brushes. So now we have the flexibility of sharing all of our brushes in a single file, which I think is enormous. That's one of the really great value adds that's found both in 12 and 13. So Painter or Corel has made some changes in uh, the Clone Source palette. And one of the biggest changes uh, let me see if I can open up a file for you so I can show you properly. I've opened up a photograph from a photographer friend of mine, and I've opened it up with its source file. So in the old painter days from 12 and earlier, in our clone source file, when we opened up our painting, we could select or attach a painting uh, by clicking on this bottom icon that says open source image in which I've opened up both my um, proof and the uh, retouched version, my prep file. I'm gonna take my tracing paper to zero. So here's my prep file. Here's my painting. Whoops, excuse me there. So here's where Painter X3 has made a huge breakthrough. And I want you to listen very carefully here. In X3, you have the capability of opening any document of any size to clone your information from immediately. In older versions, 12 and earlier, you would notice that your document had to be the exact same pixel count, the exact dimensions for it to line up. So now if we wanted to bring in some really cool colors from even just like a screenshot or a snapshot we took at the museum, we could say open source file. 
and find any document, say for example, and it can be any size, any orientation. Um, let me scroll through here. So I've opened up some reference images that I took at the Met, um, at different museums, and pulled from screenshots. So say, for example, I loved the color tones, and let's pull up this artist. I believe this is one of Monet's water lilies. When we look in our clone source palette, you can see that we now have this water lilies image. So when I turn my tracing paper on, you can see it automatically centers it, and sizes it as, uh, depending on how many pixels it had, and it was a smaller file. So in the past painter, they had to be exact dimensions to be able to line up. So say for instance, this is a 24 by 30. Um, we'll take a look at our canvas size, canvas, canvas size. We had 4,300 pixels by 6,200. So in earlier painter days, our clone source file had to be exact in dimensions, meaning 4300 by 6200 pixels, or it would not line up. So now we have this wonderful ability to, let me pick a brush I actually would like to use here, pull in source information from any image of any dimension. And it could be a horizontal image, it can be a vertical image, they don't have to line up in dimensions anymore. And I know this painting here is showing not a very good example, but you get the idea that we can pull in any source file at any size now, which is huge in Painter. So we can open up another one, say for instance, we loved the, um, the colors and Let's pull up one of Pino's images. This is a Pino snapshot, so it's very small. But say we wanted to clone from that, it would go in the center automatically and just give us some other colors to play with. Now you'll see it starts to go white because the image is so small, so we have white space that fills it. So if we return back to our original, we can pull up our reference file. So those are two things that make X3 worth the upgrade and just amazingly brilliant in helping your creative workflow. Now one thing I do want to show you here, one of my other favorite little tidbits, is this is brand new in Painter. This is called the, um, uh, the reference image palette. They have given us a palette that is a tool. It's not an actual separate document, but it's a tool. So we can pull up an image file. Say my client loved this painting and loves those color tones in that background and wants to match that background for this painting. We can zoom in. We can move it around, zoom in some more. We can zoom out. It's either hitting, I believe it's the command button, or we can zoom in. So this is giving me an idea of the colors I need to shift to, to match my background painting to this. We can also sample colors from it immediately, which means, let me go back to my brush tool. When we hover over this palette, you see that my dropper tool automatically comes up without me switching tools. So we can sample colors as soon as I leave this palette and go to my painting, my current tool is active. So I can put down colors, sample, paint, sample, paint, sample, paint. And I did not switch tools here. This will really speed up your workflow and allow you to match either older styles of painting. You know, if your client comes in and said, well, um, my child's sister had her portrait done five years ago, can we match that style? You can open up your reference images pull up that older painting, move it around. We can even enlarge this a little bit. Here we go. And we can either take a look at stroke or colors and match that quickly without having to open up a separate document. So in old painter days, without this reference image, we would have had to keep two documents open, our painting, and the image that we're taking our information from, say for example this. Which means we would not be able to have painted full screen 
with using this as our reference file, and we would have to switch back and forth between tools with our dropper or sampling and brushing. So now that in X3 we have that wonderful reference image, we can paint full screen, switch tools without having to manually do it, and your tools on your little reference palette are found here, and then immediately go into painting. So I find it speeds up your workflow, it just gives you a really cool little reference image, like if you're working on the easel in traditional days, you've got all your reference files or reference images either taped to your easel or taped to your wall or just kind of cluttering up everything. Uh, so now, instead of having two separate documents open, we can have it as a palette, and I think that's such a powerful part of the new X3. So I hope that this has helped you uh, make your decision into moving forward with Corel Painter X3. I'm Heather, and you can learn more about uh, my paintings and see what Jack has to say about brushes at www.heatherthepainter.com.